Good morning Craftopians. In today's video we're going to be going through how to install mods from Nexus onto Craftopia. The process is a bit involved so I'll go as slow as I can. Just a few disclaimers before we go. I am not responsible for any damage you cause to either your game save, your computer or anything else involved in the process. You're doing this purely at your own will. So please don't at me should you have any issues. That being said, I'm happy to help with any queries or problems you may be having. Um, we can address them in the comments section. Um, but with that out of the way, uh, let's look at the problem we have. So I'm currently doing this on a virtual machine. So when I launch Craftopia, the performance won't be very good, um, but I'm doing it to a clean slate, if you will. So if we look in the program files directory, under Explorer, we can view hidden files, so view at the top. This may be hidden, so you'll need to click this little down arrow. View hidden items. And you can see we have the Windows Apps folder. Let's try and open it. So it's asking us for permission, we can click continue. And we have to navigate to the security tab. We click advanced. Now initially you'll be met with this dialogue that won't show much. We will need to change the current owner. So if you click that and pop in your username, press OK. Here we have a list of the permissions for the local accounts. All we're going to do for user is place owner on sub container objects. And press apply. Depending on how many applications you've got in the directory, uh, this may take some time. This is a new virtual machine, so there's there's nothing in there. So we can press OK. And again, we can press OK. Now we should have access to the folder. You can see we have access here. So now if we find uh, Craftopia, it's here somewhere. You go at the bottom. You can see we have access to the files. However, if I try to make a file in this directory, we can't do anything. That's because Microsoft has gone under a lot of trouble to ensure that these applications are very restricted. So in order for us to extract these files to a new location, we need to use a program. Now, as I said in the start, I'm not responsible for any damage or anything you may cause. This application we're about to load is a public application on GitHub. I've used it myself. I've not personally read through the code yet, but I believe it to be trustworthy. Um, but that's down to whether or not you decide it to be trustworthy. We're going to download the binary here. Um, I would assume your Windows 64, you shouldn't really have 32-bit, but you can check. Um, there should be many guides as to how to do so, but for the most part you'll be 64-bit. Okay, we're going to open the file. Close down Edge now. And you'll see two files here. I'm just going to pop them on my desktop. Wonderful. So before we do the next part, which extracts the files, we need to create a folder where we want them to eventually live. I'm just going to make a folder on my C drive called Craftopia. We'll leave that there. Next, we need to run Craftopia. And again, as I say, this is running in a virtual machine, so the performance of Craftopia itself will be terrible. Let's see, we have it loaded here. I'm just going to go ahead and minimise that. Okay, so now Craftopia is running. We're going to run the UWP injector. Run it as administrator. 
we will get the warning and again you're doing this of your own accord i've taken a risk to trust the application that's down to you whether you do so or not and we're going to run anyway if you get these warnings you'll need to do the following so again let's just look at these warnings We will address these next. So to address these issues, we need to download the C++ redistributable binaries. I'll leave this link in the description. And again, I'm assuming we are 64 bit. We're going to click that. We agree. We install. And I'll get back to you once these are done. Okay, that's done. You can close that and the injector should now work. There we go. So now we need to look for the process ID for Craftopia. Um, it does give you a list of applications here. You can see Craftopia here. It's running under the process ID is 6. 4680 that will be different for you we can pop that in just return now just so you can understand what this is doing and why we have to go through this method um, whilst this is running is the user we are is not privileged to do anything within this directory um, it's heavily encrypted using Microsoft magic however there is an exploit within I would assume Windows itself, wherein the application itself has access to the files. As expected, it would need to call upon files for loading data and, you know, icons and etc. So what this process does is it injects itself into that process to be able to gain access to the files and then it's dumping them. Once this process is complete, it will give us the path or it will automatically open it and we can continue from there. So for the next part, I'm just going to let this run and I will come back once it's complete. It may take some time. However, just let it run. It will complete. There we go. That's complete. As you can see, that took a good few minutes. But now we're done. So if we look in this dump folder, you can see we have all the files here. Next part, we need to copy these files over to the directory we created earlier. To do that, we're going to use PowerShell as administrator. So just to see how I did that, you can go to File, Open Windows PowerShell and Open Windows PowerShell as administrator. That will bring us into this directory. So next we're going to be using xcopy. So to do so we will type xcopy of the following directory all files and then we want the path. So I chose c slash Craftopia and the flags we will give is slash e slash t. Okay, that's done. What you see there, that should have made the directories. Next we'll do the same, but give it some different flags. So R for recursive, H, E and H, E and G. And this will go ahead and copy all the files. And I'll come back when that's done. Okay, that's finished. So now all the files are copied. We can go ahead and close this window. And we can close this. Okay, now we've successfully copied the files to a new directory. We need to restore permission back to a trusted installer. To do this, let's navigate to the C drive. Head to Program Files. And here we see the Windows Apps folder. You right click the folder, go to Properties, 
head to the security tab and click advanced. From here we need to do a few things. We need to ensure that we remove our user. So again, make sure this is your username and you can tell it's an individual user because the icon is a single person. Click remove and then apply. Finally, we need to add the permission back to trusted installer. So click change, paste in the following string. This will be in the description, by the way. Click check names and OK. Make sure you tick replace owner on sub containers and objects and hit apply. OK. And we can press OK. OK again. Now, if we try to go to the folder, you'll see we're back where we were to begin with. Just to test everything works, if you head to the store, we're going to search for Solitaire. And just press install. Or any game or app really. Again, we're just confirming that we can naturally load and install applications. It's looking pretty good. And we can launch it. Yep, so we're all good. So now we're ready to move on to the next stage. The next part we need to actually uninstall Craftopia. Now, assuming that you are all set up correctly using cloud saves, your save data should remain safe. Again, I can't promise this. When I was testing, my save data was safe. So we type in add or remove programs. We'll find this window here. And then from this list, we can search Craftopia. We can go ahead and uninstall it. That'll take just a moment. OK, that's done. Next, we need to enable developer mode. So whilst in the settings, if we go to home and from here, you can just type dev and you'll see developer settings. Next, we need to turn developer mode on. It will warn you, um, just say yes. Again, we accept the risk of doing so and we can always turn it back off after. This will enable us to actually install the new application. So much like before in this Craftopia directory where the files were copied to. If we go to File, open PowerShell as administrator. Now we want to install the application. So add app x package and then register. And you should be able to push press tab and we want the app manifest.xml. Let's go ahead and press enter. Okay, that's installed it. We should now have Craftopia again. There we go, we can see it here. Next part, we need to actually download the Step in X. This is the framework used for modding Unity games that a lot of the mods use for Craftopia. Again, I'll leave a link in the description for this. So we want the 64 bit version here uh, 5.4.15 that's the latest as of this video and it seems they're going into long-term support mode so this won't be updated I'm gonna go ahead and download that now and open it wonderful so we can close that now we'll need to extract these files Let's go ahead and extract them to that directory now the next part may be different in your machine but you should just be able to select these three files or that folder in these two files and drop them into this directory there we go now to confirm everything's working what we're going to do is go into the bepinx core sorry there just needs to be a couple more files so let's just run it now and we should see hopefully that it generates some files so 
We will load up Craftopia. And sure enough, it's given us the files here. So we'll just wait for Craftopia to start. I'm going to close it. Wonderful. So if these files are generated, we're looking very good. But just to confirm that the game is successfully modded, we can go into config, edit this config here. I'm going to edit it with notepad. Okay. And I'm going to do a search for console. You'll see here, enable showing a console blog up. It changes to true. Save the file. And if we launch Craftopia again, we see the debug console. This is a surefire way of knowing that the game has successfully been modified. So again, we can just close all this. So for some closing statements, we've successfully managed to modify the game using BepinX. When you go to apply mods from Nexus, you will essentially drag them into plugins directory. I'm not going to show you how to do that today. Um, that's potentially a case for another video. But many of the guides on Nexus should show you how to do so. Now, some caveats to this method. I have not yet tested this with an update. So I'm not sure what happens when the game updates. Um, if that happens, I will provide a updated video to explain what to do under these circumstances, but I would assume you can repeat this process we've done here. If you have any questions or any feedback, please leave them in the comments section. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy modding Craftopia. Please stay tuned for lots more Craftopia videos and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and consider subscribe if you like my content. And thank you, have a nice day.